Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at some reactions of amines using butyl amine as an example. We're going to talk about the reactions between amines and water, amines and acids, amines and acyl chlorides, amines and halogen alkanes, and amines and metal aqua ions, specifically copper 2 plus ions. All using butyl amine as an example. Amine basicity and formation have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the reactions, it is essential you are comfortable with what amines are. Amines are a group of organic compounds that derive or come from ammonia, NH3. Amines can be aliphatic or aromatic. In aliphatic amines, one or more of the hydrogen atoms in ammonia has been replaced with an alkyl group. An alkyl group being a straight or branched carbon chain, such as methyl or ethyl. In aromatic amines, one of the hydrogen atoms in ammonia has been replaced with an aryl group. An aryl group is an aromatic ring group, such as phenyl. Effectively, a benzene ring attached to something else. Amines can be primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on the number of carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen in them. Primary amines have one carbon group bonded to the nitrogen. Secondary amines have two carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen. And tertiary amines have three carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen. Recap done. Let's go. Amines react with water to form alkaline solutions. The nitrogen atom in an amine has a lone pair of electrons that can be used to form a bond with a H plus ion, enabling the amine to accept a H plus ion and act as a base. When reacting with water, the nitrogen in the amine accepts a H plus ion from a water molecule, leaving a hydroxide ion behind. The water is effectively donating a H plus ion and acting as a bronsted lary acid and the amine is accepting it, acting as a bronsted lary base. The nitrogen gains a H plus ion and ends up with a positive charge, forming an alkyl ammonium ion. The hydroxide ions left behind make the solution alkaline. For example, when butyl amine reacts with water, a positively charged butyl ammonium ion gets formed and negatively charged hydroxide ions that also get formed make the solution alkaline. Amines react with acids forming ammonium salts. As we've just seen with the reaction of an amine with water, the nitrogen with that lone pair of electrons enables an amine to act as a base. When reacted with an acid then, an amine accepts a H plus ion from the acid and ends up becoming a positively charged alkyl ammonium ion. As the acid reacts, a negatively charged ion gets released, the conjugate base ion of the acid. The positively charged alkyl ammonium ion and negatively charged conjugate base ion will end up being attracted to each other, and if the water is removed from the solution, it will form an alkyl ammonium salt. For example, if butyl amine and hydrochloric acid react together, the salt butyl ammonium chloride is produced. It's made up of a positively charged butyl ammonium ion formed when the butyl amine accepts a H plus ion from the HCl acid. And it's made up of a negatively charged chloride ion formed when the HCl loses its H plus ion. Amines react with acyl chlorides to form amides. Amides are carboxylic acid derivatives that contain a carbon atom that is double bonded to an oxygen atom and single bonded to a nitrogen atom. The nitrogen atom can either be bonded to just hydrogen or other carbon atoms, depending on whether the amide is primary, secondary or tertiary. They have been covered in more detail in a separate video. <laughs> Check the links in the description below. Acyl chlorides are highly reactive and the nitrogen atom in an amine is able to act as a nucleophile, again because of that lone pair of electrons. 
As a result, when an acyl chloride and amine are reacted together, a nucleophilic addition elimination reaction occurs, with a secondary or tertiary amide as the product, and an alkyl ammonium chloride salt also gets produced. Secondary amides are formed by primary amines with acyl chlorides and tertiary amides by secondary amines with acyl chlorides. For example, butyl amine can react with the acyl chloride, ethanoyl chloride, and the secondary amide, n butyl ethan amide, gets formed. The n butyl part of the name here just tells us that the nitrogen in the ethan amide has a butyl carbon chain bonded to it. The butyl chain coming from the original butyl amine. Primary amines can be reacted with halogenoalkanes or haloalkanes to form secondary and tertiary amines in nucleophilic substitution reactions. A halogenoalkane has a carbon atom bonded to a halogen. Halogens have high electronegativities, and this means the carbon halogen bond is polar, with the carbon atom having a partial positive charge and the halogen a partial negative charge. As we've just seen in the previous reaction, the nitrogen in a primary amine has a lone pair of electrons and can act as a nucleophile, meaning a primary amine can attack the partially positive carbon in the halogenoalkane and end up being substituted for the halogen, forming a secondary amine. The secondary amine can then react in the same way again with another halogenoalkane molecule, forming a tertiary amine. Tertiary amines can then react with another halogenoalkane molecule and end up forming tetraalkyl ammonium ions with a positive charge. Water must not be present in these reactions, otherwise the halogenoalkane can just end up reacting with water and forming an alcohol. As a result, the reactions are carried out in ethanol, ethanolic conditions. For example, butyl amine reacts with chloroethane, forming a secondary amine. And if further substitution occurs, a tertiary amine also forms. Again, this reaction has been covered in more detail about amine preparation. Check the links in the description below. Amines can react with metal aqua ions to form metal hydroxide precipitates and ligand substituted metal aqua ion complexes. Aqueous metal ions form aqua complexes that are made up of the positively charged metal ion surrounded by water molecules acting as ligands, in which oxygen atoms in the water molecules have formed coordinate dative covalent bonds to the metal ion. When small amounts of an amine are added to water, the amine acts as a base and hydroxide ions get released, making the solution alkaline, as we saw earlier in this video. If this happens in a solution with metal aqua ions in, the hydroxide ions now present in the solution end up taking H plus ions from water ligands around the metal ion, leaving them as OH minus ligands. This happens until the whole complex ends up becoming neutral overall. At this point, it is no longer able to dissolve in the water and ends up as a metal hydroxide precipitate. Sometimes, however, if more amine gets added, ligand substitution reactions can occur and amine molecules end up becoming ligands attached to the metal ion. The nitrogen in an amine is able to use its lone pair of electrons to form a coordinate dative covalent bond with the metal ion and replace a ligand already bonded to the metal ion. As amines have no charge, they are neutral ligands and this means the metal aqua ion complex ends up with an overall charge again, the charge of the metal ion itself. And this means it dissolves back into the solution. In other words, the precipitate formed when small amounts of amine were added re-dissolves again when excess amine gets added. For example, when butyl amine is added dropwise to a solution that contains copper 2 plus ions, Cu2 plus, a light blue precipitate forms. If then added in excess, the light blue precipitate dissolves and a deep blue solution is formed. 
The copper 2 plus ions are present in an aqua ion complex surrounded by six water ligands, forming the aqua ion CuH206 2 plus. The dropwise addition of the butyl amine causes hydroxide ions to be present in solution. As the butyl amine accepts H plus ions from free water molecules. Two hydroxide ions then take two H plus ions from two water ligands in the Cu2 plus complex, leaving CuH204 OH2 behind, forming a light blue precipitate. If added in excess, then four butyl amine molecules end up being substituted into the complex and the metal aqua ion Cu, CH3, CH2, 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 NH2, 4, H2O2, 2 plus forms and dissolves back into the water to form a deep blue solution. This would be an example of partial ligand substitution as only four of the water ligands around the copper are substituted with the butyl amine. So to summarize, amines react with water to form an alkaline solution. The nitrogen in the amine with a lone pair of electrons takes a H plus ion from a water molecule forming an alkyl ammonium ion and leaving a negatively charged hydroxide ion behind. The presence of hydroxide ions make the solution alkaline. Amines react with acids to form a salt. The nitrogen in the amine, again with that lone pair of electrons, accepts a H plus ion from the acid acting as a base, forming an alkyl ammonium based salt. Amines react with acyl chlorides to form amides in a nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. The lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen in the amine enables it to act as a nucleophile. Secondary amides are formed by primary amines with acyl chlorides and tertiary amides by secondary amines with acyl chlorides. Amines react with halogenoalkanes to form secondary and tertiary amines in nucleophilic substitution reactions. Quaternary alkyl ammonium halide salts can be formed by further substitution reactions. The reactions are carried out in ethanol, ethanolic conditions. Amines can react with metal aqua ions. If added dropwise to a solution of aqueous copper 2 plus ions, copper 2 hydroxide, a light blue precipitate, forms. If added in excess, ligand substitution occurs and the light blue precipitate redissolves given a dark blue solution. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.